Let's take an example of this forwarding IP virtual servers when you are talking about uh, 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 rather than standard virtual servers. So can you see this example? It says the client is on the 10.0 subnet and the server is on the 172 subnet. Yeah. And in this case, my, my scenario, or you can see the task is, uh, I want the 10.0.60 10 network can reach to 172.60 network, I, but I do not want to translate anything. Uh, right? Yes. And I I want that any 10 network cannot access 20.22. It can access all other IPs, but I do not want act to access 20.22. Is that possible? Yeah, with the forwarding virtual server, then it's possible, I guess. Yes. Uh, when you are talking about the forwarding virtual servers, it means it will allowing all traffic. So you can say that from this subnet, you can access this, this, and this based on the forwarding IP virtual server. Forwarding IP virtual server means you are using this virtual server. So it means all the subnets, uh, all, all, the, all the IPs within this subnet will be allowed, right? And this is says all ports, right? Yeah. So all, we, all will be allowed, right? Now, if you want to block, if you created that one, it means it will allowing anything, right? Now we want that this this network this IP or this network cannot access this one. So what we have to create is we have to create one virtual server, one extra virtual server, which it says virtual server is 172.16.20.22, uh, right? And we can make this type as a reject. Okay. Right. So what we have now we have two virtual servers, this one and this one. If any client making a request to this one, F5 will see that, okay, this is my virtual server, I have to reject that. So it will deny that, it will not send the packet to this one, right? Okay. But for this one, it, it allow all other information. So whenever you are doing this, you do not need a translation here, because if you do the translation, then it will not make a sense in the forwarding virtual servers, okay? Okay. This type of scenarios you can use with this. And uh, let's say let's say you have created multiple virtual servers. Uh, what how uh, the virtual servers will take into effect? That I already told you in the uh, I think first class. Like if you are creating a multiple listeners, right? And uh, multiple listeners means you can create a virtual server as a listener. You can create an S net, right? Yes. And net, net. right? As yes. as a uh, virtual listeners. But let's say you have not created this but you have created multiple virtual servers, okay? Uh, one virtual server with the I subnet mask, one virtual server with the IP only, right? So we have created that multiple virtual servers with the specific IP, specific ports, specific IP, all ports, network IP, net specific ports, right? Network, network IP means subnet mask, right? Okay. Subnet, uh, subnets you are defining here rather than single IP. In this, you are assigning a single IP to the virtual servers. So when you are defining anything on this type of listeners, now, which one is to be preferred, right? So preferred is like longest match, just like a routing table. So when I say longest match, it means if any packets, let's say this is an example of taking a specific IP of, let's say 172.16.10.5 uh, colon colon 80 port for this one. Here I say the same IP, 10.5 colon star for all ports, right? Now. Oh. If, if any client is making a request to 80 port, will be used this virtual server, right? If any client is making a request other than 80 port, then this will be used. Okay. Got it? This is way the longest, because if you are making a request to 80, so this, this uh, virtual server is having the longest match, so it will be preferred first. Okay? Then it will go to this one. So this yeah. is the way. So in here, the virtual server the virtual server created here, the IP address of that virtual server should be on the same subnet as the below servers, the internal servers. No, no. Who okay. Says? No. Okay. No. It can I'm be just taking an example. It, it, okay. Because it, the virtual server we are creating, please make sure that whatever the virtual server you are creating, that is reachable from the client. Right. Okay. It does not have any sense related to the servers. But yes. Uh, from the self IP, you need to uh, make sure that uh, these uh, servers are being uh, same uh, communicating on the same subnet. Okay. It is not necessary to create a same subnet. If it is like if you are creating a server here, right, 
and then you are placing a router between here and the self IP. It could be possible, but make sure that the self IP should be able to reach the servers uh, to uh, for the health status monitors, right? Okay. Okay. It is not required to be in the same subnet, but it is recommended to be on the same subnet. Okay. Got it? So this way you can use different type of listeners and then define the powers in this. Okay. So in real ent a real enterprise, uh, in real enterprise, you will see the directly connected subnet servers. Oh, we don't have any routers in between the FI and the internal servers? Yeah, because like if you are working in the uh, enterprise work and the server is like placed in the same VLAN uh, or like it is not, it is not, you can say that the FI is placing on one side and server are placed on a different side, right? So they are on the same, uh, same premises. So they are mostly on the same subnets. Okay. So you can say that, yeah. Right? So if you are creating a like uh, router in between, then you are again uh, making a single point of area. Suppose then we need to create a two, multi two routers there, right? To provide a high, high availability, right? Yeah. So rather than going for this and this stuff, better is to uh, go with the directly subnet. Okay. 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 <clears throat> Now, there is one of the feature, good feature, if, if you see this one, uh, this is called auto last hope feature. Now it says, if any packets come to the F5, it could be possible that the, def uh, the default gateway send that packets. Now, let's say this, this client is making any request to these servers, and these are the ideas, or you can see that the firewalls. Okay. Okay, so if in firewall there is a stateful behavior, right? When you say stateful behavior, if any packet come to this firewall, they expect that the return packet should also be come from this one. If that not does not comes, it means it will make it as a out of order packet, right? Out of order packet, then it will drop that packet, right? Suppose okay. let's take an example here. It says I'm not taking an example of this one. It come to this direction, and they reply, and the F5 send that to this ideas rather than this okay right in this type of scenarios let's say you have two firewalls here right the sync packet is comes from this direction when the server replies f5 redirect that sync reply to this one sync acknowledgement right okay. rather than to this firewall but this firewall does not have any information of the sync so it will not accept sync ec, right? Because it says, I do not have any sync information, so I cannot accept this. So it simply drop that packet. So the client will not see uh, the reply, right? The packet will be dropped in that okay. type of scenario. So to avoid that scenario, F5 use auto last hope feature. What it will do is, it, it check the incoming request and note down the MAC address of the incoming request, right? So that any packet if it is coming from this direction, let's say, and sending to this one, the reply will also should be to the same firewall regardless of the default gateway, what we have mentioned, right? Okay. So it track, track the interface, incoming interface, and try to give the reply to the same interface, uh, same interface so that this type of behavior cannot be happened, okay? okay? So if you see this, the request one through the IDS, reply need to return through IDS, not to IDS or the default to gateway, right? How it can be possible until unless, because if you are not using this auto last time, uh, if we are not, uh, if the F5 is not tracking that interface for the incoming packet, then it will not, uh, it will not have any information how to return to that, inf uh, to return to the packet, then it can use the default gateway stuff. Right to avoid that, or you can say that to over supersede that information, you need to use auto last reaper. By default, it is enabled. Okay. okay. So if you see this, if any packets come to this IDS or if I want, it will try to translate to this information. Got it? Okay. Uh, by default, it is enabled. Okay. So this is the auto last feature. It is enabled. Okay. Okay.